Welcome back everyone to Between the Ropes TV. We've got a special video today because we're going to be talking about Anthony Joshua and those that have been with us for a long time uh, will know that there's no better two people than the three of us on the channel that should be debating this than me and Josh because Josh is a huge AJ fan and let's just say I'm not. So we're going to be talking about whether AJ can get uh, become a three-time world heavyweight champion today. Also talk about, you know, also his recent, um, what he's recently been doing in camp, of course. He's been over in Dubai training with a few big names, let's just say. And we're going to also talk about that as well and whether that's really the right strategy as well. Um, Josh, let's just jump straight into this and we'll, we'll start We'll start on the fact that he's been training with Floyd Mayweather um, recently. What, what what do you make of that? Well, there's two sides. I mean, I should say the context of this video uh, for those watching. I did an Instagram post this morning literally posing this question. It sparked a little bit of a debate between me and Scott, and here we are. On the Mayweather topic, uh, someone on our social media did comment, you know, Mayweather is one of the best fighters ever, if not the best. However, he's not a trainer. And I I do agree with that. However, he's been seen publicly before with Mayweather. Mayweather went to, obviously, the Pulev fight. And I don't think going and doing a couple of sessions with him, taking pointers off a guy like Floyd Mayweather can do him any harm. Because let's be honest, he tried to outbox Usyk and failed. So if you want to improve your boxing IQ, who better to go and speak to than Floyd Mayweather in this day and age in reality? There is nobody. Do you reckon that's the best thing to do, though? Because let's be honest, like, I feel like Joshua now, he needs to, if he's ever going to become a three-time world heavyweight champion, he probably needs to realise, you know what, no matter if he's spending all the time in with, he could spend it unanimously with Mayweather, Canelo, um, I don't know, Errol Spence Jr., Crawford, and they could all be training him about boxing IQ. But for me, if he's ever going to become free world heavyweight champion, he needs to go back to what he does. Uh, he has done best previously, and that's be the knockout artist. Because I don't, he can train for years, and he'll never be have the better boxing IQ and be able to outbox you sick over twelve rounds. No, I, I would agree with that genuinely, which has shocked me. You've knocked me here at the start of this video, uh, and I, I agree. But I also think to beat a fighter like Usyk. There will be sections of that fight over 12 rounds, like we saw in the first fight, that he'll have to box a little bit. So, And he's talked a lot in interviews about wanting to be a sponge and never stop learning. So I'm not going to knock him for that. But I agree, he does need to go back to that sort of destructive roots that he sort of started and was knocking everybody out with. But spending a little bit of time with Floyd Mayweather is very different to saying Floyd Mayweather's my new trainer. True. True. Personally, if he goes over, I mean, he was spotted with like Eddie Reynoso, if he goes into like the Canelo team, look at the mix in that team. You've got Canelo, who's a freak of nature, can do it all in fairness. He can box, he can fight. But then, you know, you look at the rest of the roster. Valdez, very similar in fairness, can fight when he's got to, but also a good boxer. Frank Sanchez, a very good boxer, who can clearly bang a little bit. He didn't quite get hammer out the other night, but can still bang. And Ryan Garcia, who... Very jury out topic, but is also a knockout artist in the lighter divisions, which is quite impressive. So if he was to join that team and, you know, with everything that Rob McCracken's taught him previously, along with, you know, Joby Clayton, Angel Fernandez, if he can shape all that in with the likes of what an Eddie Reynoso will bring to the table, tell me how he won't be Usyk next time out. Look, the only way that he's going to be Usyk is that spy knockout Exactly. And I don't think, I don't know what his strategy is, because if he bulks up a bit, a bit more, goes back to that more bulky, more, less athletic look, he won't get near Usyk. Did he show perhaps the power that he could knock out Usyk last time? I, I, I'm still a bit, um, I'm not too sure on that. I mean, let's face it, you know, I think everyone's aware of that uppercut that he, uh, he possesses now and someone like Usyk isn't going to just fall straight into that. And, you know, I'm looking at this rematch in 2022 and I still only see it going one way. I think, I honestly think Usyk is going to outbox him over 12 rounds. I think AJ will get frustrated by the sixth or seventh round when he hasn't managed to put Usyk down, which will lead to mistakes, which we've seen before with him. But he has overcommitted. He has made mistakes. And I see the exact same thing happening again. But, uh, you know, we're asking the question, can he be, uh, become free Well. Three times world heavyweight champion in 2022. I'm going to say no. 
I don't know if I'd say the same if he can ever do it again, because I think if he, you know, I think if he does cherry pick a certain opponent who could, uh, you know, potentially he, ha he still has many years left in him, AJ, if there's really that heart and desire there, which I also question, um, I feel like he's one of them that would just uh, made enough money. Let's see you later. But we'll see. We will see with that. Um, but you're, I feel you're more saying you think he'll become world heavyweight champion 2022. I do. Right. Firstly, he's already got enough money to retire. It's quite well documented. His purses for his last few fights have been sort of 10 to 15 million quid a fight. His endorsement deals are huge. So we know if he wants to retire, he could have by now. You know, it's he's got his management I mean, I've company. been drinking a league because I had sport, spot all over the last few months, which uh, has his face on talking about him being the world champion. It's made that drink taste a little bit uh, sweeter and nicer for me every time <laughs> I look at it. <laughs> well, well, there you go. I mean, it's just ridiculous. You're just bullying the guy. Yeah. But no, but on the Usyk fight, Chisora for me set the blueprint, pressure him. Usyk looked uncomfortable in that fight because Chisora took it to him. Now Chisora gassed out. I think really after the eight nine rounds, Chisora was out of puff. But Anthony Joshua was a lot more accurate than Derek Chisora. In fairness to him. You know, which is always swinging, not wildly, that's doing him a disservice, but, you know, it was a lot more of a rugged pressure situation. It if was, Anthony Joshua can sort of control that aggression a bit more, keep the accuracy up, I think he knocks him out within eight rounds. I, I don't think he needs to bulk up back to, you know, like the 18 stone two we saw, I think it was against Takam a few years ago. But I think, you know, coming in at like 16, 13, he's, it's a bit too light. If he can come in with like another five or six pounds heavier than he did the last fight, he's just got to get up close. And it, the blueprint's there. Derek Chisora set it in. They're both from Finchley. Looked, he talks about him being a role model, Derek Chisora. Look at the role model. The blueprint's there. Lean on him. Rough him up. Usyk doesn't like it. And also, he's, Usyk's had, still only had three fights at heavyweight. And I'm not knocking Usyk. He's a fantastic boxer before we get that in the comments. Chaz Witherspoon. It's an nobody. Derek Chisora, he didn't look great and it raised a lot of questions. Could he even win a world title at heavyweight? And then in fairness, he boxed brilliantly. But I think as much as he boxed brilliantly, Anthony Joshua made the mistake of thinking, I'll outbox the boxer. And I think that will have caught everybody by surprise, including Usyk, because he'll have been thinking he's going to come in, try and use the size and bully me. For, with how good Usyk is, he adapted, outboxed him, and obviously we know what happened. Well, I think, I think one thing you've got to say, Josh, is the fact that when you're talking about his three fights, I think it'd be fair to say that Derek Chisora put in a better effort than AJ. And, you, you know, we're never going to say that Derek Chisora, unfortunately, I'd love to see it, is ever going to become heavyweight champion again. And he's mm. the one that actually came closer to beating Usyk than AJ did. And this is why I really am not backing him to do it next time, because... <laughs> That's why the blueprint's there. The role model shown in the way. Joshua will... I mean, will, don't get me wrong, and I was about to finish before you... I mean, uh, I mean, I mean if he takes Derek Chisora as a role model, the way he's going, he might have as many losses as Chisora by the time he finishes his career. That doesn't bother me. When you look at the level <laughs> of opposition Chisora's been in with, you can't... No, I'm only it. joking. I'm a massive Chisora No, you're out of order, mate. I'm, <laughs> no, I'm going to get Derek to come and start on you next. I don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but being serious, for me, the appointment of the next trainer will win or lose Anthony Joshua with this fight. It's that crucial because depending on, you know, look at Tyson Fury with Deontay Wilder. He left Ben Davidson, first fight, he was robbed, but went over to the Cronk and Sugar Hill. Different yeah, style, worked on the punching power and destroyed Deontay Wilder in the second fight. Obviously, he got another win in the third fight. It was a bit closer, but he still got a convincing win. That's If Joshua gets this next decision right, without forgetting the fundamentals, because, you know, everyone slags Rob McCracken off. The man's a brilliant trainer. If he keeps that and just improves the next training situation, I want to see him with Eddie Reynoso, Team Canelo, and he becomes a three-time heavyweight champion in the spring and undisputed by Christmas because he'll go and beat Fury as well. I mean, look, it, it remains to be seen. Josh has made two massive calls there. AJ, uh, AJ becoming free world time champion. You've also said that um, it'll beat Fury, which is ridiculous. And lastly, 
you've completely wrote off Dillian White as well. Let's not forget about that. But anyway, guys, let us know your thoughts in the comments. What do you think will happen in 2022 with the whole heavyweight situation? Are you backing AJ to get the win and become a champion? And in his next fight, if he actually faces Fury or White, whoever sh it should be the champion at that time, will he just get slapped up and then lose his championships late again? So, guys, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and there's going to be plenty more content coming out for the rest of 2022. Happy New Year, and have a good one. Goodbye. Yeah, we'll schedule in the next debate for will he become a four-time world champion. <laughs>